All right, so in this video, we'll talk about removing duplicates from some data. So in this case, if you look at this very small example, we have some data here with a few rows and uh, we basically have this cells. If you look through here, there's this that says AB. This one says BA, but it's not in the same columns. This one says AB similar to this line one. So this line is exactly the same as this line. And then we have this line that also has AB, but it's not in the same columns. And then it goes like this. And the final line says AB in the same columns as these two. However, there is a C that's not similar to this blank. So looking at these results, if we had to remove our duplicates, we should only delete one of these. So to do something like that, we can just select this data like this, go to data and go to remove duplicates. And right here, we're gonna get these options. Now there's this checkbox if your data has headers. Now we don't have headers in this particular data set, so I'm not gonna check that. Then I'm gonna leave this under select all, that all columns are selected from our data, A, B, and C. And I'm just gonna click remove duplicates. And you should see how it says one is removed, which is one of those A, B combinations we had. Now I'm gonna undo this, Command Z or Control Z or back button. Now, if you did have some column names on top, which I'm gonna add on top here, so I'm just gonna say call one, call two, so this will be my column names. Then we're gonna select this, go to data, remove duplicates again. Only this time we're gonna check this box, data has had a row, which should be basically the first row in your data. And when you do that, it should show those column names see here. It says call one, call two, call three. So now we're still gonna check everything, click remove duplicates, and it should still get rid of one of these AB combinations that are duplicates. And that's pretty much how this works. Now I'm gonna undo that. Now, generally, that's the way you would probably remove your duplicates, but sometimes you need to remove duplicates while you're ignoring some of the columns. So for example, maybe we only want to check for duplicates for this first two columns, and we don't really care about checking this third column. So if we went that route, we have this AB, we have this AB, then we have another AB. All of that is basically duplicate. Let me just make them bold really quickly here. So those are the lines. So if I go ahead and select the same data like this, I'm still going to select the third column too. go to data and do remove duplicates. Then I'm going to check data has had a row. Only this time I'm going to uncheck this column C, the third column out of this columns that are being basically analyzed and I'm gonna click remove duplicates. Now, before I do that, try to pay attention that right now we have AB, AB in row two and four, and then we have ABC in row seven. Now, when I click remove duplicates, only one of those AB combinations is gonna remain, and you'll see that that ABC is gone, AB is gone. So basically what happens is that the first one on top is gonna stay, all the ones that are below, they are gonna be removed. So basically, if I undo this, the ones that are gonna be removed here is this one, then this one, and then this one is gonna stay because that's the first one on top. And that was an example of checking against duplicates in two columns, and you can obviously just check against as many columns as you want. So now let's move to one of these other examples. So let's go to this data. And for example, if I have this list of states and I want to get a clean list of states with no duplicates, I could just go ahead and copy this column, paste it someplace in here on the right. And then while I have this selected, I would go to data, remove duplicates, and then we're gonna check against that column. My data does have headers, which is that C state. So I'm gonna click remove duplicates and we should see how it should just give us a clean list of states. Another way to do this, if you want something more dynamic, is to use unique function. So if I just get rid of this from here, I can just go here and do equals unique function, and then I can just select 
this range of data. Now, if I'm planning to add more later, then I'm probably gonna just get rid of this 14, the end row reference, close parentheses, hit enter, and it will just dynamically get me that unique list. And going forward, if we add more states here, it will automatically see add them. If it's one of our existing ones, it's just not gonna do anything. So that's unique function. And you could use this function with multiple columns too. So if I just went back to this and we could just do equals unique and then select this entire range of data. In this case, we're not gonna include headers. And if I enter, you would see how it removes that extra AB. So when you select multiple columns in this data, that's equivalent to us just selecting this, going to this remove duplicates and having select all. So let's say we have this data and some of these are gonna get updated because people are working with these customers and they're getting some comments from them. Now they send us back this list of notes. So see, these are coming with some notes they did and these will match some of these records. Now we want to basically just put these two records together but we want to keep the ones with notes if they are available and we want to remove the ones that don't have notes. For that reason, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this one that doesn't have any notes, copy the data with no headers, go to this notes and paste it below this data. Now, the reason I want this part to be below is that remember when we delete duplicates, if we find duplicates, the one that's in the bottom is gonna get removed and the one that's on the top is gonna stay. So that way, if we do find some data with this combination, so for example, if I look at this one, uh, let's try to find it. See, there's this, 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 that's the amount. If I just highlight this. So you can see the date is not the same because that's the date of our communication since this is a later date for communication with this customer. See, that's different than this. We wanna keep the one with our latest communication with notes. So we're gonna keep all of this on top. And then with that, if I just highlight all of this, including notes, I'm gonna to go to data, go to remove duplicates. And we don't want to check against notes because we're not gonna have notes. We also don't want to check against date because dates are also different. So I'm gonna check this box, data has headers uncheck the date column and uncheck notes. So these three columns I'm gonna keep, sales rep, state, sales, and just go ahead and click remove. And we should see how, for example, this one gets removed. Well, maybe I should just go back and just bold things that should be removed so we can kind of see what happens. seems to be it so we should basically get rid of all these that are bold and the rest should stay so I'm just gonna select all of this including notes go to data remove duplicates check this uncheck date and notes and click remove duplicates and you see how all the bottom ones got removed all the top ones stay so let's just undo this. So what if we want to now just compare these two for duplicates and basically just merge these together and in cases when the data is available for both, so for example, if I have like this one that has this date and this one that has the date, I would like to just keep both dates and then also add the notes. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is just get a nice clean list of all the transactions without dates and without notes. For that, I'm gonna create a new worksheet here. So here I'm gonna start a unique function and I want to get a nice clean list from both datasets combined 
just in case that if we have some data in notes that is not available in data or the other way around, we still have all the records. So I'm gonna start a curly bracket for an array bracket, go to data, select these three columns, do a semicolon, and then go to notes and also select the same three columns, close curly brackets, close parentheses, and hit enter. So that should give me a nice clean list from both data sets combined. Now let's just copy paste some column names. So control C, control V, or command C, command V. So that should take care of that. Now we get to more difficult parts where we have to do the date and notes. So basically we need to find matching dates from this and this data sets. So let's start by using a filter function. So I'm gonna go here and do a filter. And the filter function is gonna accept the data range and the data range is still gonna be combined data range from both. So I'm gonna do a curly bracket here, similar to that unique function I did. And I'm just gonna repeat that same thing I did. I'm gonna go here and select the dates from this first range. So the first thing I want here is just the things that need to be returned. So that's why I'm only selecting the dates. And then I'm gonna go to notes and also select the dates from here, just like that. So that's gonna be my data range. I'm gonna close the curly bracket. Then I'm gonna do a comma that will take us to the next argument in this filter function, which is gonna be the condition. So for the condition, I'm gonna create another array bracket I'm gonna go to data and I'm gonna select the sales rep column, do a semicolon and then go to notes and select that sales rep column, close the curly bracket and I want that to be equal to, I'm gonna go to my new list to the salesperson that we have in this row. So that's gonna be the first one. Now we need to do the same for these other two columns. So I'm gonna do a comma here and the second condition is gonna be the state. So again, I'm gonna do a curly bracket, go to data, select the state, data, semicolon, go to notes, select states, close the curly bracket and I make sure that equals to from new list the state in the current row. Finally, I'm gonna do a comma and repeat this for the third column. I'm gonna go to data, select sales values. You need to make sure that these match exactly the same range. See, starting from the second row for me, ending in row 14. So that's important to make sure it goes that way. And this should have been in a bracket for an array. Let me go put this back in here, semicolon, go back to notes, do the same thing for this. This should be sales amounts. Again, close the bracket, make sure it equals two from new list, the sales amount in the current row. So with this, I'm gonna close parentheses, enter to see what I get. So as you can see, I got one result for Chester, now I'm gonna go back to this and I'm gonna make sure I lock all these ranges I have. So I'm gonna just select all of this, press F4 key on my keyboard. I don't want to lock this one. That reference is gonna stay. I do want to lock this other range. So basically all ranges I have from notes and data worksheets. I'm gonna take all of those and do F4 to lock those in place. I'm gonna hit enter. Now I'm gonna try to drag this down. We're gonna have some errors, which is fine. See, I have some reference errors in some of these. So to get rid of those errors, I'm just gonna, for now, let me just delete these. So if you look at this result right here, this is the last formula I have. There's no formula in here. The reason I get two here is because this record, if you remember, had two matches. It has one match in data, this one, which is with a date 2 2017 
And then if I go to notes, it's 4-12-2017. And that's exactly what we get here. But the problem is, it's just showing below. It looks like it's for this person. So to fix that, I'm going to get back to this first formula. I'm actually going to just get rid of these, go back to this one, and then I'm going to put this inside of a function text join. And this function is going to accept a delimiter, so I'm going to use a comma, comma, and then we're going to ignore empty cells just in case. So I'm going to say true, comma, and then the last one is the data we want to join together, which is going to be, in some cases, those multiple dates. So that's going to be this entire formula, this filter function. I'm going to go ahead and close this parentheses here, hit enter. And then if I drag this formula down so that you can see what happens, you can now see that we got those multiple results showing up here in case we do have multiple results. Otherwise, we just get one date. So that's dates. Now I want to do this for also notes. So it's going to be very similar. As a matter of fact, because notes are only available in this one, we don't really have to do this whole thing that we did because there is no reason to search in here. So I'm only just going to search in this notes worksheet. So I'm going to do equals filter. So the range is going to be from notes that actual column for notes. I'm going to do F4 right away to lock this, comma. And then we need that condition thing. So it's still going to be the same three column condition. So it's going to be this one. I'm going to do F4. And I want to make sure that equals to the person that's in that row, comma. Then I'm going to go to notes again, select states, F4. I want to make sure that equals to the person well, not the person, but the state in that row, comma. And then finally, the third one, sales. Same thing. Lock that. Check if it equals to sales amount here. Close parentheses, hit enter. And that one seems to have no results. If I drag this formula down with double click, see some of them do have results. And finally, I want to take care of these NAs. So I don't want these to be NAs. I just want these to be blank. So I'll just go back and put this function inside of this function if error. So basically, I'm saying if there's an error, just leave it blank. So I'm just going to drag this formula down again. And now we should have our combined data. And that should do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.